So hi everyone, welcome to another session of startup series for GATE and EAC 2024. So in today's session, I am going to talk about the design of traffic signal. As you all know, there are different different type of signals in which there are special signals, there are traffic control signal and also we are having the pedestrian signals. In this video, we will be specifically talking about the traffic signal which is used to control the vehicle or the regulation of the vehicle on road. So before I begin, I'll quickly introduce myself to those who are watching me for the first time. If you are watching me for the first time, here's a quick introduction about me. My name is Joshit Singh and I have five plus years of teaching experience now. Just, you know, in this month only I have completed this. Qualification, I'm tech from IIT Roorkee and I think this much is enough to understand that yes, you are at the right place. So guys, there is one additional information about our workshop which is coming by Ashu Jangra sir. This free workshop is going to be there for perfect strategy to ace gate 2024. This is a free workshop on 30th of May at exactly 7.30 p.m. You can surely join him and register for this free workshop where exactly on our Baiju's exam prep, either browser or either on your application. Also below this video, you will find the description. Uh, in the description, you will find the link. Let's get into the video and the topic of today's class. Guys, in signal design method, we generally have four methods to design any signal. First, we have trial cycle method. Then we have approximate method. Then we have Webster method and then design as per the IRC guidelines where IRC has given us certain guidelines. We just need to follow those guidelines and we can get a design of any traffic signal. Now, why they are like uh, four different methods and how they are different from each other. The first is trial cycle method. So this method basically works on the iteration method, right? Here you need to assume one cycle length. Then based on that, you assume, you know, 15 minute traffic count and all those things. And based on that, you eventually get the traffic signal design. When I say design of traffic signal, what basically I am trying to say is we have to design for how much time the green light should turn on for how much time red light should turn on, for how much time amber light should turn on. If I know the duration of all three, I can say that, okay, I know the cycle length, right? And that's what I want to design. This was about the first method. In the second method, approximate method, guys, it is based on approximations, number one. And another thing is that it is not on the basis of vehicle, but it is on the basis of pedestrian crossing requirements. How, see, they are basically interconnected to each other only, pedestrian traffic and the vehicle traffic. How, suppose you are having a intersection, something like this, right? Now, suppose if there is a red light for this road, if for vehicle, this road is having red light. So definitely, definitely the pedestrians will be having the green light because they can simply cross the road when vehicles are not passing this intersection from this specific road. So that is how they are interconnected. Green light for pedestrian is nothing but red light for the vehicles for the same road. So this is the where the second comes, uh, second option comes into the picture. Third is the Webster method, everybody. Webster method is the one which is based on the rational approach to design the high, uh, this traffic signal uh, method. Now the point is, this Webster method is the one that we are going to discuss in today's session. Webster method is there by keeping this thing in mind that we have to reduce the losses. Now, what are losses? We'll talk about them also. Just give me some more minutes to explain this. Okay. And the last one is as per the IRC guidelines. So there's no, you know, very uh, rocket science to understand in this. This is everything is given in the codal provision. So I'll be uh, telling you the Webster method, everybody. So it is basically we get the optimum cycle length. When I say optimum cycle length, what does that mean? That basically means minimum loss of time. minimum loss time okay that's what we are interested in and uh, here we will be having saturation flow and normal flow now i know there must be a doubt in your mind what is a saturation flow i think uh, normal flow to you know traffic volume right but what is saturation flow so let's do one thing let's understand what actually is the saturation flow now suppose we are having a pavement something like this we have a road here and this is an intersection 
right now for this road we have the red light so all the vehicles are standing in a queue something like this or something like this okay vehicles are standing in a queue now the point is guys as soon as as soon as as soon as the green light will turn on what will happen all of them will slowly slowly start crossing the section this section dotted line right sir let's see that the difference between the number one and number two vehicle uh, you can say the time headway time headway between number one and number two vehicle was t1 or ht1 time headway between second vehicle and third vehicle is st2 time headway you know what is time headway that is the time gap between two vehicles when they are crossing a section right similarly from here to here let's say st3 so guys what actually will happen is because this is the first vehicle will be having minimum velocity right when it is crossing this section but the second vehicle since it has this much of distance left so this vehicle can accelerate up to certain extent and will cross this section by the time gap of ht1 the third vehicle have this much distance to travel and this vehicle third vehicle can accelerate even more and the velocity of third vehicle at this section will be more than what the velocity of second vehicle was in that case this st2 the time gap between second vehicle and the third vehicle will be lesser okay so i'll write like this right and same thing goes like this so the time headway is reducing and it will go up to a point right why because yes finally this vehicle it may have achieved the design velocity and below that uh, behind this whatever vehicle you will be having it will also have the design velocity when both the vehicle have same velocity then definitely the time headway between all the vehicle will start becoming stagnant so if i try to show you this thing with the help of a graphical representation it will be better to understand so let's understand it like this suppose we have here time headway okay sir and now what is going to happening is guys time headway as the vehicles are you know moving what it will show you is like this it will slowly come down and at a particular point it will become stagnant time headway will become constant right and this is nothing but can you see anything minimum than this no that is why it will become minimum time headway what minimum time headway and not just minimum time headway everybody not just minimum time headway everybody but also the saturation headway because now the saturation has come right so from here you can get the value of saturation flow or saturation capacity also how you can get it so that is nothing but it will be 3600 by ht minimum ht minimum or you can also call it saturation capacity that is just words where that we are using but concept is this only right sir so uh, that's what basically you have as a saturation flow now the third thing that comes into the mind is the time loss like what is time loss everybody because we have to consider the loss of time as well in this case so there are basically two type of losses one is the clearance loss time and another is the, another is the starting time loss now how like what is them like how to describe them i'll tell you with a very practical approach so first let's begin with the starting loss time suppose we are having an intersection something like this and a vehicle is standing here because there is a red light for this vehicle now as soon as the red light will turn green this vehicle obviously it is not going to just push a button and will start acquiring or it will acquire 40 km per hour or 50 km per hour speed no as soon as the red light will turn green this vehicle is going to take some time in reaction in reacting right the driver will take some time to make the decision or to take the reaction and then it will start moving so we can say that when the red light turned green the initial period of green time was not used properly right so was not used properly so that initial time period of green light is called as starting loss time okay this is one thing there is another loss also suppose there is a green light right now 
I'll show you just a minute. Okay. It is, I think, all. Yeah. So suppose we are having, we are having a intersection like this, an intersection like this. I think I forgot to choose the pen. Yes, yellow. Right. Right now there is a green light. And a vehicle is approaching towards this intersection. Vehicle is approaching towards the intersection. Now the point is that right now the traffic light is green. So the driver is sure that he or she is going to cross the intersection. But when the vehicle reaches, let's say somewhere here, he or she founds out that now the yellow light has turned on. Since the yellow light has turned on, now this vehicle knows that now there will be a red light. So either he or she should cross the intersection or he or she should stop the vehicle. Let's say it decided to stop itself. Let's say uh, there was uh, five seconds of amber time or yellow time and in three seconds the vehicle reached here. Now remaining two seconds are wasted because during the yellow time also you are supposed to use the intersection but this vehicle did not use it by so that because he or she has the fear that what if it comes somewhere in the middle of this uh, uh, intersection and the red light turns on so they are they should they they have to pay the fine also so that is the reason why they stopped before only but they lost two seconds right sir now since they lost two seconds because of that what happened we have got the clearance loss time so basically there are two type of losses right sir so what are the two uh, losses are clearance loss time and starting loss time apart from this there is one more thing that is called as all red time now all red time is given so that the intersection that is the part like like this I'll, I'll show you here just see this let's say that uh, the green light is on right for this road and for this road the red light is on so vehicle is waiting Let's say the vehicle came from here and it was just here and exact at that time here the green light turned on and here red light turned on. This vehicle as soon as it will move ahead they will collide. So to avoid this type of situation what will happen is this light will not immediately turn red uh, sorry green okay this light will not immediately turn green this light will remain red only. Now, for certain duration of period of time, both the road are having red light. Why? So that we can clear this section. No vehicle is there on this section. So the period of time for which all the roads are having the red light as a signal, that time duration is called as all red time. So these are two things which I had to tell you. Now coming to my uh, today's topic, which is the Webster method. Now the formula of Webster method is super simple everybody. Optimum cycle length can be found out as 1.5 L plus 5 by 1 minus Y. What is L over here? So L is nothing but it is uh, what is the loss per phase? Okay, what is the time lost per phase? Time lost per phase into number of phase plus whatever is the all red time we have considered. Right, sir. So we generally consider if it is not given that loss per phase is 2 seconds. So formula becomes 2n plus r. L is this. Now what is y? So guys, now we will be having the information about normal flow and saturation flow of the road. So let's say there are two roads A and B. So I will be knowing normal flow of road A by saturation flow of road A. Y B normal flow of road B by saturation flow of road B and what is this uh, Y over here Y is the summation of Y A plus Y B right so this is going to give us the optimum cycle length now how we are going to decide how much green time should be given how much uh, amber time or red light should be given for that we can find out green light for road A is nothing but it is equals to Y A by Y bracket C naught minus L. Similarly, green light for road B, YB by Y, C naught minus L. That's how we are going to get the values. I hope everybody is uh, clear with this uh, explanation. 
राइट आई हैव अ सैम्पल क्वेश्चन फॉर यू हाउ द क्वेश्चन आर बी कास्ट फ्रॉम दिस टॉपिक एवरेज नॉर्मल फ्लो ऑफ क्रॉस रोड ए एंड बी ड्यूरिंग डिजाइन पीरियड इज दिस एंड दिस सैचुरेशन फ्लो इज दिस एंड दिस All red time is 12 seconds. Design two phase traffic signal. So here, guys, as you can see, total loss is nothing but two into number of phase are two plus 12. So that is 16 seconds. Correct, sir. Y value will be uh, Y A is uh, how much? 400. That is N A by S A plus N A by S A. so these value i have already calculated for you 0.32 and 0.25 okay from here we get the values as 0.57 now let's put the values here in this formula 1.5 into l plus 5 1 minus 0.57 From here, the optimum cycle length is sixty-seven point five seconds. Okay, sir. Not just this. Now let's see how much is the green time for road A. How much is Y A? Point three two. Point three two by point five seven. C not is sixty-seven point five. Loss was sixteen. This would be. Twenty-nine seconds. Cool. Similarly, green light for road B. Point two five by point five seven. Sixty-seven point five minus sixteen, and this would be twenty-two point five. Cool, sir. Now we can provide two second amber time to both the roads. So total cycle time will be or cycle length will be how much? Green light for road A plus amber time for road A. Green light for road B plus amber light for road B plus the all red time, which is also given, right? Twelve seconds. So this total is sixty-seven point five seconds. Ah, uh, is it clear? We can make a phase diagram also to make you understand even better. right so let's understand it like this like suppose when there is a green light on road a amber light on road a there is a red light on road b similarly when there is a green light on road b amber light on road b there is a red light on road a and this is all red time right so ga is how much ga is i think 29 right so this is 29 this is 2 This is twelve. This is twenty-two point five, and this is again two. If you add them, you will get the answer. So this is all about your Webster method. I think you now have got the exact idea that how these things works. And if you really like this video and thought that this is a informational video, you can please share this with your friends, and you can subscribe to our channel if you are here for the first time. And we'll be bringing more such. knowledgeable videos for you thank you so much for watching my name is joshit singh i will see you in the next session till then please take care of yourselves and please take care of your family have a nice day